Hello. Okay, so this is my review of Love and Terror on the Howling Plains of Nowhere, which is a true crime documentary that I saw today. Director is American, uh, name of Dave Janetta. And this movie was very, a real mystery. Murder, well, not murder mystery, a mystery, okay? It was set in Nebraska in this town called, oh boy, Charbon Chadron. I think it was called Chadron, Nebraska. Small town. And um, it was about this brilliant mathematics professor who had just arrived. He had just started teaching at the state college there uh, for the past six months. And then one night he just disappeared and nobody knew what happened to him. And so this movie was all about that. It was about his disappearance. But it was also about this place, this place, uh, Chadron, Nebraska. I hope I'm getting that right. Let me check it just a sec. Okay, yeah, so I just checked it. It's Chadron, Nebraska. And um, so the other part of this movie, I would say this was two movies in one, actually. And I had, I had some problems with this. Although I would say the movie was good overall, um, I would say the sort of conflicting themes in this, in this, um, in this movie were, you know, made it less effective than it could have been. Uh, cause it was really, it was kind of a schizophrenic movie. The one half of it was a very serious story about this mathematics professor who goes missing. Nobody knows what happens to him. And then the other half of the movie is about this town, this place, with all these people in it. And, um, in the description in the uh, in the hot dogs book, it said it was kind of a Twin Peaks type community, and yeah, I'd agree with it. Like I would agree with that description. Like there was a lot of really eccentric characters, kind of weird stuff going on, and they kept reading all these um, all these like uh, blips from this police blotter, like all these weird calls that came into the police station, the town police station, and just weird stuff, like just strange, strange stuff. And the main guy in this movie who was doing most of the talking was this brilliant author named Poe Ballantyne. I've really got to look into this guy's books and read some of his stuff because he, and they were like excerpting, I guess, um, bits and pieces from his book because I, I think he wrote the book called Love and Terror on the Howling Plains of Nowhere. I'm assuming it was about this case. And um, so he's really a great writer, this guy. And um, so I've got to look him up. But anyway, he was the one who was doing most of the talking, and he was doing most of the narration. And so, you know, they were going all over the town and, you know, talking about the place and how it's just surrounded by all this prairie. It's like surrounded by all this emptiness and nothingness, right? And nobody could figure out why this brilliant mathematics professor came to this small college to teach. Because um, this guy was really a genius. Like, he was really, really, really extremely, extremely gifted and talented. Uh, but for whatever reason, this guy, um, you know, just showed up in town, applied for a job at the college, and he became one of their professors. And he was very shy, very quiet, uh, didn't make friends easily, but he did get to know a few people there in the town. And a lot of people really liked him. Like, the, in the short time that they knew him, they really liked him a lot and thought he was, you know, a very warm person, very, very, very sweet, very, very giving. Um, his students were his students were saying what a great teacher he was and how he cared about his students and stuff like that. And, you know, one day this guy just mysteriously just disappeared, didn't show up for work one day. And then I think it was um, maybe 90 days later, nine months later, I can't remember the exact time period, but they found his body up in this wooded area in, like, the middle of this prairie, like, miles away from town. Um, and he had been, his I think his hands and his feet had been bound with electrical cable. And they found um, a bottle of peppermint schnapps. And he was burned, like, 98% of him was burned, like, to the bone. And so people were trying to figure out, like, was he murdered or was it suicide? Like, this, this, this was the big mystery. And um, mo the consensus of uh, most of the people who, who knew him the best seems to be that it was not suicide, uh, that there was nothing to indicate that he had any plans to kill himself. Even though he had had a history of one suicide attempt before, um, he had been divorced, and it was after his divorce, he was in this depression, and he attempted suicide. Um, and he was on medication for depression, although he had recently gone off his medication. 
Uh, me personally, from what I, from my watching the movie and taking in all that there was to take in, I think it was suicide. Um, because I really cannot see how anybody, like, why would some, why would somebody murder this guy? You know, it, it really doesn't make any sense. And the way it was done, like, this was in the middle of, like, it was, I think it was in December that, that this happened. So it was extremely cold. And this, this was at night. So this guy would have had to go, up this huge hill, you know how the, all the terrain is in, in all these like prairie states in Nebraska. It's just like completely barren and you know hilly and all this stuff. So he would have had to know the area very very well. And he was a walker. He was a known walker. So he would he had a flashlight with him. He would have had to know exactly where he was going to find this spot, right? And a murderer, you know, just take, abducting him maybe and taking him up there all that way to this place to murder him. It just seems to me a little, a little, a little more far fetched than the idea that he committed suicide, you know? Um, so I didn't know the man, you know, I don't know that much about the story. All I know is what I've seen in this movie. But for me, I see what, from what I concluded, I think this guy committed suicide. But, you know, then they were saying that we'll never know. We'll probably never know what happened to this guy. Um, but yeah, the, what I did not like about this movie, I mean, yeah, I liked all the characters in it. I liked the eccentricity and I liked all the weird quirky stories they told and all that stuff, but it really, it kind of conflicted with the, with the story of this professor. Like on the one hand, there's this ultra serious thing going on and then there's all this light sort of comedic stuff. So to me, it didn't really blend that well together and I found it actually quite distracting. And my husband actually was saying on our way out of the theater, he was like, a lot of the stuff in that movie was superfluous. And I was like, yeah, that's the perfect word. It was superfluous. There was way, way, way too much superfluous stuff in this movie. You know, if they would have concentrated more on this guy, I would have liked to know more about him, more about his history, his life, you know? So maybe it would have been a little bit easier to figure out what happened to him, you know? But they focused more on on the town and the people in it and their theories and their conjecture and all this stuff. And, you know, I thought it was supposed to be about him. You know, there was not enough focus on him as a person, you know, and that's what I didn't like about it. But I did think it was a good movie. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. I just think that it would have could have used some editing for sure, because it was also too long. And like I said, all that superfluous stuff, I don't know why, why he put so much of that in the movie you know, and, you know, the, the conflicting vibe going on, like, on the one hand, you're laughing, because you're hearing this crazy, ridiculous stuff, these stories about the weird stuff going on in this town, and then you're hearing about this guy who, you know, just disappeared, and people are trying to figure out what happened to him, and, you know, it was just, I'm, I'm mixed about this one, I'm mixed about this one, uh, I would give it a thumbs up over a thumbs down, but, I was irritated that too much time was spent on superfluous things and not enough on this man, this professor, whose name was Stephen Hadamy. I believe his name was Hadamy. Boy, I hope I'm getting that right. Um, I'll put it in the information bar. And, um, you know, yeah, I wish it would have been more about him. I wanted to know more about his life, you know, what was going on, you know, more of an investigation into him you know? But then again, he was this very, I guess he was this very private person, so maybe there wasn't that much, much for them to delve into. I don't know. But um, it was a very, very interesting film, a real mystery. Like, you're, you're sitting there really trying to figure out what went on, what happened to this guy. So in that sense, I really, really enjoyed it, because I love that. I love trying to figure out what's going on, and this was definitely uh, one of those types of movies. So if you're into that, you would enjoy it, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, I couldn't stay for the Q&A for this one, unfortunately. The director was there. I got a little bit of intro stuff. Uh, couldn't stay for the Q&A, though. But anyway, yeah, I would recommend it. Love and Terror on the Howling Plains of Nowhere. Okay, so I'm off for a couple of days, believe it or not. So I'm not seeing another movie until Friday. But, uh, of course, I will be back with my review when I finish seeing that film. So thanks for watching, you guys, and I'll see you then. Okay, bye.